on the Tup Tup expedition. <laughs> Since I was born, this boat was my only home with my five brothers and sisters. In the last six weeks, we sailed around whole Svalbard. Together with our friends, Merritt and Simon, the two scientists, and Robert, a photographer. We were the first sailing boat to do this route. Along the way, we cleaned up beaches and did research on microplastic. Best for me were the animals. Dolphins, walruses, whales, birds, and polar bears. So we came back from this hike and Dario was maybe 50 meters in front of us and suddenly he pointed very quiet his fishing pole to our dinghy so, and that's very strange. He didn't yell or something so something is wrong and I said okay I think we have to go and then suddenly we didn't realize but I think Andre realized that there is a polar bear and suddenly I saw these three dots coming quite fast behind him and he was with Mia there really close. I don't know how many, maybe, maybe 40 meters. Hey, Mia, it was really close. And uh, so I was so scared. I was like, okay. So I was like, someone has to get Mia, someone has to get Mia. And it was all very stressful. But we got the dinghy in the water and then actually they turned away from us. So we went back and actually watched the polar bear. But yeah, it was incredible really special moment yeah, and to be there all together as well was just like su such a nice such a nice event uh, <laughs> we just saw the biggest carnivore in the world yeah they, they're still there Maybe, yeah i think you don't see it it was great <laughs> it was wonderful crazy. Wow, yeah, too. Hello, so we have been our 19th microplastic test uh, sample. Um, so we have never had this much plastic in a test before or floating stuff. So it's pretty shocking because we have the pack ice right behind us. And yeah, we even saw bits of plastic like, like this one and then like a few of plates like things so very much plastic <laughs> and how much north are you are we here um about like 81 83 or so okay so i'm merit we're doing two different types of research at the moment and um one of them is the microplastic trolls um, with the manta net and the other part is the environmental dna so the eDNA samples um, so we just took samples all around Svalbard, so along our whole route. Um, we've been taking them together, so then we can look at the overlap of plastics and species in, w in the different parts of Svalbard. And we went quite far north, so it'll be interesting to see what we see in the samples really close to the pack ice. <laughs> Because the ice was still blocking our route, my dad had an other idea. Um, so we go to the top of Svalbard, like always, from sea to top. And we are quite curious to see how far up the snow is, because that's uh, quite an important indicator if uh, these glaciers are growing or melting. When there's snow all the year round, on the glacier then the glacier can produce glacier ice otherwise uh, when it's just ice and all the snow melted then the glacier cannot produce ice anymore and will die so it's quite interesting now with climate change to see 
how far up we will find snow. So we left the boat and we will walk 30 kilometers and at about 1700 altimeter and then we come back another 30 kilometers. So the trip to the mountain was intense but very nice. We walked for 24 hours I think and the first part was a bit annoying because there were lots of rocks to, to, to go up and then as soon as we reached the glacier it was like uh, walking a highway so it was flat and there was a warm wind coming through um, it was sunny the, the view was super nice I enjoyed it a lot and it's always nice when you make these intense trips you have this you have kind of a border to reach like five six seven eight hours of walking when you when you get exhausted and then you get kind of in a trance where you just walk by yourself and you don't really feel tired anymore. And then we were like in a base, it was like a little valley. So we were there and then we saw that we have to get up a very steep hill. I went up with these dudes. Basically my dad pulled me up because I did not have real camp crampoons. My brother brought up a horn and they made a tower so now it's one meter bigger, so it's the highest top of Svalbard. Bravo! It was quite a challenge because it is so warm now. The sun is probably now up here, 15 or 18 degrees. Maybe you hear the water coming down from the summit. So it was all blank ice. So quite difficult conditions to climb and on top there were huge crevasses, they were open and the snow was like mud. With temperatures like this and the snow gone and just uh, blank ice, even to the top of the highest peak in Svalbard, uh, there's not much uh, ice building, uh, so glaciers will disappear here quite fast. I'm a mountain guide now for over 30 years and I never have seen a day like this where the glacier is melting so fast and it's just amazing at the top of Svalbard nearly at 80 degrees north and in quite high altitude for Svalbard so there is so much melting you can really see the glacier more or less disappearing Four hours, <laughs> and my feet have blisters Ooh. here. Yeah, you see it. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Yeah. Are you tired? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty tired.
Indonesia itu. Jetzt ist das drin.